How to trade the correct score market on Betfair. This video is going to be a beginner's guide to the correct score market, which is one of the trickiest markets to trade in football and something that is definitely not for the newbies. But by the time you've finished watching this video, you should have a much better idea of how to approach it. So coming up in this video, I am going to be explaining the market behavior on the correct score market, how the prices move, what influences the price moves, how you can predict the direction of the prices and much, much more. Very very, very important stuff. I'm going to be showing you three common strategies for trading the correct score market, three common approaches to trading this market, and of course, giving you some live demonstrations to show you how it actually works on the Betfair interface. And of course, I am also going to be giving you some typical newbie mistakes so you can avoid those and some very, very important warnings if you're going to be trading the correct score market. And for those who stick around to the end, I do have a freebie for you. I'm going to be showing you how you can get my correct score market cheat sheet for free. That is for you to download and keep. So there is a lot coming up and I hope you're comfortable. Let's get into it. So as I said, the correct score market is definitely a tricky market to trade. And if you are new to football trading, this is probably not the market you want to start with. There are 19 different outcomes on this market, which could mean 19 different prices to keep track of over 90 minutes. Hundreds of different scenarios that can play out with regards to the order that goals go in and the goal timing as well. So it is a lot to take in and it's definitely not a simple market to trade. But by the end of this video, you should have a pretty good idea of how to approach trading the correct score market on Betfair if you so wish. And so this is a typical correct score market on Betfair. And for those who are new to the correct score market or haven't even ventured over to that side of things yet, I'm just going to give you a quick, quick rundown of how it all works. As you can see, there are 19 selections, but what we're trying to do with the correct score market, as I'm sure you know already, we are trying to predict the final score of that of that particular match. So this is Severe against Levante. And if we thought it was going to be nil-nil, we could back the nil-nil. If we want it for it would be a 2-0 to Levante, we back nil two and so on and so on. So I'm sure you get that side of things, but one big thing you do have to be aware of when uh, you're involved in a correct score market is this possibility here of an any other home win, any other away win, and any other draw. Now you have to be aware of this because if you look at the score, the, the score lines that are available, they do not go above three. So anything that involves four goals or more is not covered in this particular correct score market. So if Sevilla were to score four and win, then this is going to be that outcome. If Levante were to score four and win, then any other away win would be the, the winner. And if, they, if it ends 4-4 four, four or 5-5, five, five, I think 5-5 five, has come up once in the history of the Premier League, then um, any other draw would be the outcome there. And a bit of Betfair history for you if you are new. Before all these three markets, the home win, away win and the draw, they were one market called Any Unquoted. And that was actually quite a fun market to trade, the any unquoted, because there was a lot of overreactions in that. But it's, 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 it's definitely a lot trickier to trade these three markets altogether. But if you are trading the correct score market, that is probably the one thing you do have to be aware of from the outset. It doesn't go on forever. Uh, once it hits free, you're going to move on to this, which is going to cover any other score line. Um, which could happen with severe winning and, and so on and so on. So you do have to be aware, aware of that if you are new to trading the correct score market. And anyway, if you do want to learn to trade this market, then the first thing you're going to need to understand is the market behavior and how it all works on there. The first time you ever look at a correct score market is probably going to look like carnage with prices flying around all around the place in all different directions as well. But I'm going to show you that the market can actually little be a bit more simple to read than you first suspect. So we're going to understand the market behavior of the correct score market and uh, dive into that right now. So the first rule I would definitely want to just uh, show you. And again, it is going to seem obvious if you've ever looked at a correct score market. Uh, you're going to know this already. But after a goal is scored, all the redundant score lines are going to go to 1,000. So if it goes 1-0 to the home team, then obviously 0-0 can no longer happen. But also 0-1, 0-2, 0-3, that can no longer happen as well. And you will see all those score lines will shoot out to 1,000, which might confuse you. You might think, hey, why didn't they just remove 
those score lines from the market but really the reality is it's just to save work for betfair because if they wanted to to do that after every single goal they'd have to recreate the market and it, it would also be annoying for us because we'd have to wait for a whole new market to open and i mean betfair are not very reliable at the best of times so the best compromise is just to leave the market open but the redundant score lines shoot out to a thousand but uh yeah don't make that newbie mistake of uh betting on a score line that can't possibly happen because i have seen that happen before so just be aware of that but generally the market behavior what i'm going to have to do is i'm going to have to break this down into two halves for you because they say it's a game of two halves and i mean it literally is a game of two halves in the correct score market so i'm going to start by showing you what happens in the first half and this is the rule of thumb that you need to be aware of and obviously you do have to keep in mind that hey anything could happen in a football match and sometimes markets go a little bit crazy but generally this is what you can expect regarding the prices in the first half okay so the current score line is going to steam that that should be quite obvious but there are two other score lines which are also going to steam with it and those are the next two possible score lines so the current score line if it is nil nil that's going to steam in but the next two possible score lines from nil nil are one nil and nil one they're going to steam in as well if it's one one then it's going to be the two one and the one two so that is going to happen yeah you're going to have pretty much three score lines all steaming in and all the other score lines they're either going to remain static or they're going to drift so that's what you have to keep in mind. So while the match is nil-nil, yeah, we know nil-nil is going to steam. We know one nil is going to steam. But the two-nil probably is going to remain static. And depending on how that team is playing, it could actually drift. It probably won't be a big drift in the first half, but it will either remain static or drift. So you have to keep that in mind. If you think that you're, you're going to back the two-nil, there's going to be a steam won't always happen a lot of that can depend on how well the favorite is playing but generally the prices that are definitely going to steam is the, the the first three so the current one and the next two all other score lines they're gonna you have to expect that they will be static or they will drift and this behavior will remain the same even after goals are scored even after the goals are scored that doesn't change anything so if nil nil was steaming one nil was steaming nil one was steaming once the goal goes in, then all of a sudden, if it's 1-0 to the favourite, that means 1-0 is going to steam, 2-0 is going to steam, and then 1-1 is going to steam as well. <laughs> so, um, and, and just, just for those who are new to Betfair, steam means the price is going to go lower. <laughs> the price is going to go down, just to clarify that if anyone is a little bit confused. So, there it is. There it is. If it is 0-0, then 1-0 and 0-1 are going to steam. If it is 1-0, then 2-0 and 1-1 will steam and like i said this is the general rule of thumb to go by for a typical correct score market and the times when you're going to see maybe a different behavior is when you have a, a very very heavy favorite and uh, what you can see when there is a heavy favorite involved is that uh, maybe the next two or three score lines in favor of that favorite are the prices that steam but i'm going to show you more i'm going to show you an example of that a little bit later on but that is the general rule of thumb and that is what happens on most football matches but of course it is football trading and sometimes crazy things can happen and this is what happened in the world cup now this was morocco against iran and this match kicked off and the price was around here it was like 7.4 and the price steamed in, uh, as you would expect, on the nil-nil, and it hit six. But then I remember that match, it went really, really crazy. It was like end-to-end, -end, there was goal mouse scrambles. And then look what happened. The price actually started to drift. Now, that is not something I see very, very often in, in football trading. So, like I said, sometimes freak things can happen, and it all depends on the action on the pitch. But generally, you're just going to see that price steam in and steam in and steam in but let's take it let's take a look at an example from a real life match that was recorded on the betfair market this is Alves against Rio Vallecano and this was right before kickoff that this screenshot was taken so let's just quickly concentrate on the nil nil which is 10.5 the nil one's at 11 and the one nil is at eight and let's have a look to see uh, where these prices move to this is 25 minutes in you can see the nil nils moved in the one nil 
and the nil one they've they've all moved in let me just um try and bring these up both on the same screen so you can see this for yourself you might you might want to pause this you might want to enlarge the screen uh, to get a, a, a much closer look at this one but it's it's pretty pretty obvious to see what's happened here the nil nil was at 10.5 by 25 minutes that's steamed in nil one 11 into eight one nil eight into uh, 6.2 now let's have a look at the other score lines we can see the nil two to Rio Vallecano that started at 21 and you might think hey that's steamed in to 19.5 by 25 minutes but really you can only lay that at 21 so that is that 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 means the price has pretty much remained static uh, 2 nil to Alaves that was at 12 and it's still at 12 uh, 25 minutes in so it's remained static it hasn't moved anywhere and if we look at the bigger score lines like the 3 nil uh, it was, that started at 30 and the 3 one started at 25 and you can see that they've drifted out 34 and 38 so uh, like i said you could pause this to take a closer look but it, it pretty much shows you the market behavior and how it works and then by half time uh, the, the front three score lines they've all steamed in significantly from the the starting price and pretty much by half time we are looking at most of the prices uh, starting to drift and no longer remaining static most of the other score lines anyway but let me try and bring that up we can get a closer look let's have a look from 25 minutes into half time and you can see that for some reason that nil two score line has, has really stuck around in this match but Everything else has started to drift apart from, oh no, even, even the 1-1 one, one has started to drift. That was 6.8 and that's gone out to 7.8. So pretty much everything else has, has started to drift here. Uh, and the only static scoreline has been the nil 2 to Rio Vallecano. And the only explanation I could offer for that is that maybe Vallecano are dominating in this match and the markets haven't, haven't really wanted to move against them. Uh, too much so it's the only explanation I can really offer but you can see how, how the rule works it is the front three score lines they all steam in and the rest either stay static or start to drift in the first half it is actually quite simple quite simple right and after a goal it is still pretty much the same the same rule of thumb that the the current score line the next two score lines they're all going to steam I got a quick example of this. This was her for, her for Berlin against Schalke. Schalke just took the lead when we took the screenshot. And you can see the nil one, 9.6, nil two at nine, and then one one at seven. And then you would expect that these three prices are going to have moved in. And this was like 10 or 12 minutes after that. And you can see they've all started to comfortably move in. So I, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're watching this, you're already starting to get an idea of ways you, you can trade the market just on knowing this uh, this little bit of market behavior here let me just bring up the two on the same screen just to make it easy for you and again if you wanted to pause the video and and study this a little bit closer uh, do feel free but it kind of shows you the market movement that we saw in the first 10 minutes the biggest steam uh, was on the the, the the nil one nil two and then one one and then other prices will either remain static or start to drift um, and you can see something like the bigger score lines the ones which take a few more goals to get there they start to drift like the two three has moved out from 24 out to uh, 30 um, so yeah lot, lots, lots to keep in mind there and like I said you can pause that and check that out or you could uh, download the cheat sheet which I'm going to give you at the end of this video and then you can study and look at the markets yourself and of course like I did touch upon it can get a little bit tricky to predict these markets when there is a strong favorite involved because <laughs> markets when there is a strong favorite involved they become very very in love with that favorite and a lot can depend on how well um, that favorite is performing but the general rule to to think about when there is a strong favorite is that you should expect the current score line to steam as you would expect and the next two score lines in favor of the favorite to be the ones to steam so while it's nil nil you'd expect also one nil and two nil to the favorite to also steam with one nil to the underdog maybe that price just remains static but it, it can be dependent on so many factors but i've got a quick example here uh, this was barnet against brentford i think brentford were like a 1.3 favorite in this one and you can see the starting prices this is brentford were the away team so 
we're looking at the nil nil the nil one and the nil two uh, and then let's move this on 25 23 minutes into the match and you can see that um, nil nil's moved in nil one's moved in nil two's moved in and even nil three has has moved in in favor of the favorite now what one nil to the underdog barnet that started out at 30 and then 23 minutes in it's still priced at 30 so it's remained static although i would expect that if we got into the later stages of the match that might start to steam in but um yeah it, it can be pretty tricky to kind of understand the market behavior when you do have a a strong favorite involved so i'm pretty sure you got a good idea of how it behaves in the first half now the second half this is where things get a, a little bit different so in the second half you would still expect the current score line to steam this is the one constant of the correct score market the the current score line is always always going to steam now the next two score lines in the second half they're going to start to go static and i and i and i i said they're going to start to go static specifically because when the second half begins they might not be static right away but the steam on the next two score lines is definitely going to slow down it's definitely going to slow down somewhat and you're going to start to see those prices go a little bit static they're not going to steam as much as they were in the first half but all the other score lines in the second half they will start to drift and they will start to get bigger and bigger the, the less likely uh, that the that, that it is that those score lines will actually come in and as as mentioned this behavior will remain the same even after goals are scored it's going to stick to the same rules so in the second half also a, a way of predicting prices after a goal is scored as you as you do know i mean when goals are scored all the prices will just move one score line up so that all the prices are just going to move one score line up so the price that is on the one nil is going to reform as the price on two nil the price that was on two nil is going to reform as three nil and this is quite good in the second half because uh the price on the current score line for the majority of the second half especially after 60 minutes and so on is going to be the lowest price in the market it's going to be the lowest price but you know that you could back the so say the current score line was one nil you know that you could back two nil at a bigger price knowing that if a goal goes in the price is going to move in to the lower price it's going to move into the one nil but i'm going to give you a little bit of a demonstration of that in the uh, in the live trades when we get into that very shortly but let me show you the let me show you this was the same alaves rio viacano match uh, that we looked at ju just now and this match had a very early goal in the second half so this what makes it a bit more interesting for us to look at so we can see here uh that well we've got to expect is that nil one is gonna keep steaming in but the next two score lines nil two and one one they might steam in slightly but they're gonna start to hit some resistance and then they're gonna go static and then they're gonna just start to drift out the later and later it gets in the match but let's just take a look at 60 minutes in you can see the one nil that was sorry the nil one uh, it's still steaming in on Viacano, nil two and one 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 one's moved in but uh let's move this on 70 minutes one one's remain the same you can see they're starting to go static now the nil two and the one one they've hit that resistance point and they're going to remain static all the other score lines are drifting all the other score lines are drifting and like i said feel free to pause this but i'm going to give you the cheat sheet at the end of the video so you can study the market movement yourself and get a good idea of it uh so even by even there the difference 70 to 75 minutes you can see uh a bit of a bit of a drift starting to happen so six two nil has gone out and then 75 minutes it's moved out to 6.6 .6 and even one one has started to drift as well and then the later and later it gets in the match the more these prices are starting to drift so the nil two is really starting to drift the nil one is really starting to steam in one one is starting to drift and it's just going to carry on like that i mean look at nil two is really really starting to drift us out out to 9.8 uh, with five minutes left uh, one one's out to seven and 
Okay, I don't think I've got the clip of the 90 minutes, but I'm sure you get the point in, in of, of how these markets move in the second half. That is the general rule of, uh, of the second half, is that the current price is going to steam in. The next two score lines, they're going to start to go static and they're going to start to drift as well. All the other score lines, they're just going to be constantly drifting throughout the second half. So now you've seen how the correct score market moves and the general market behavior and how we can uh, predict the price movement and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're probably already thinking about some ways to trade this market. But what we're going to get into now is the three most common ways to trade the correct score market. And number one is dutching, dutching the market and trading it. That would mean you're covering a few different score lines and you're, you're aiming to go all green at some point in the match. You're, you're probably picking out a target score line that you think the match is going to finish, maybe 2-0 to the favorite. But you're also going to cover something like 1-0, 3-0, uh, 2-1 as well. And if you can hit one of those target score lines, then you're going to make a profit. Dutching is very, very complex. I'm going to give you a very brief demonstration shortly, but it is quite a big, big subject uh, when it comes to correct score trading. There is also scalping. And as you saw, we know the direction of a lot of these prices. So scalping is a pretty big possibility when you're trading the correct score market. And there is also back to lay. Back to lay. I mean, there are some pretty big prices available in the correct score market, as you saw, as you saw just in those little uh, those those screenshots that I showed you just then. There's some pretty good prices, and so there could be some pretty good profits on offer if you uh, were backing high and then laying low. So there is also the back to lay option as well to trade the correct score market and these three are the most common ways of trading the correct score market they're not the only ways there are other more inventive ways out there but we're, this is a beginner's guide to correct score trading so we're going to keep it as simple as we can but what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you a quick live demonstration of all three of those ways to trade the correct score market let's go so when you're dutching the correct score market, it basically means you're going to be covering more than one outcome. So in this match here, Union Berlin against FC Cologne, we have covered uh, a few score lines here. So we've covered 0-2, we've got 1-1 covered, 1-2, 2-0, 2-1, -2 um, and then that's it. And then the 1-2 as well, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we've covered about five score lines there, and it, that is... That, that is pretty much it. Now, obviously, this is just a, a very, very basic demo. I'm not going to get into why we've covered particular score lines and why we've covered that many. That is for a whole different video because there are so many ways, so many different ways to Dutch and trade the correct score market. So this is just a quick example. You can see what we've done here. We have covered a fair few score lines. They are covered now. I just put those bets in the market. And the, the, what we're going to do is we're going to try and go all green in play at, at some point, probably be, probably a, a little bit later in the match. If uh, the score line is, in, is on one of our target score lines, so the nil 2 the 1-1, one, one, the 2-1, one, or whatever, then the aim is that we can just go all green and make a profit no matter what. So that is the, that is the aim of dutching and trading. This is just a quick demo. Let's see how this one plays out. And so here we are about 74 minutes in on this one and we're on one of our target score lines of it being 2-0 to Cologne. So we've got 2-1 covered, but we don't have 3-0 covered as well. And we could cash out now for what is, what is around a 50% uh, return on our investment. So that's not, not bad at all. So remember, we went in with a £20 stake and we're going to cash out and go all green. Um, if I just fix that up for around £12, which... Makes it around a 60% return on the investment. So not bad. And obviously, when you are uh, dutching the markets, you're going to cover certain score lines and you're going to have some decisions to make um, depending on how the match is going and if you want to cash out or if you want to try and let it run to the final whistle, which, which sometimes you can do as well. In this particular situation, Berlin are 2-0 up, uh, but they've got a red card as well. So who knows what could happen in the final stages of this one. I mean, 15 minutes left. We just take the money. But that, that's pretty much how it works. It's just a basic demo of how it works when you're touching a correct score market. And like I said, there are so many different possibilities when it comes to dutching and trading a correct score market. 
that <laughs> we would be here for a much longer video if I was to show you some other examples. But there you have it. Pretty basic scenario. We, we covered a few score lines, the 2-0, 0-2, 1-1, and 1-2 and 2-1. And as you can see, we've cashed out. It was on the 2-0 and uh, we've got 15 minutes left. And we made around 50, well, sorry, 60% return on our investment. So very basic, basic uh, example there of Dutch in the correct score market. So this is Huddersfield against Everton. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of how you'd usually just do a quick scalp on the correct score market. So we're going to get in here. We're going to back uh, the 2-0 to Everton. So Everton leading 1-0. And as we know, uh, the current scoreline, which is 1-0, that's going to steam. And then the next two scorelines, 0-2 and 1-1, are going to steam also. So we know that 0-2 to Everton is going to keep moving in. So, I mean, one, one of the easy ways to scout the market is when you know the direction. So we know the direction with this already. We know that the 0-2 is going to move in. So we've backed uh, at 7.2 and I put in a lay order to match that. At seven and it's just a, a case of trying to get in and out of the market and, and, and get and get matched and then win your scalp so when you're scalping on the correct score market it's not as quick as when you scalp on the goal markets um, that that's that's something to keep in mind as well and also obviously we have to keep in mind that when you are scalping like what we're doing right now a goal going in is going to damage us now um, that's one reason why if we were to scalp on the nil one to Everton right now, a goal goes in and it destroys us. We lose our whole stake. Now, as it stands, we're, we're scalping the nil two scoreline. So if Huddersfield score, yeah, that's not good. That we, we're going to lose our whole stake. So ideally, you're only going to scalp something like two nil to Everton when Everton are the dominant team and they don't look like they're going to concede a goal anytime soon. So you, you've got enough time to kind of get in and out of the market and, and do what you got to do. Um, so obviously a goal to, a goal to Huddersfield, we're going to lose our whole stake. A goal to Everton uh, right now would mean that we're probably going to have to get out uh, odds of 8.4 to lay. So we are going to take a loss, albeit not a total huge loss. So those are the times that you're going to want to do the scalping. You're going to want to do it uh, when on, on a scoreline where the, the team is dominating and they're not looking like they're going to concede so um that's something to keep in mind as well now we put in the order there at seven and we're just waiting for that to get matched and as i said on the correct score market especially in the first half when you're scalping these markets do move uh, quite slowly you're not going to be getting in and out within a minute uh, you could be looking at two minutes three minutes four minutes um who knows it, a, a lot can depend on the action uh, one other thing to keep in mind as well, when you get more experience with scalping, you will begin to notice when these markets are moving a little bit faster uh, than normal. Uh, so there are moments in the first half where suddenly this 2-0 is going to start to steam in a bit quicker than, than normal. And that could be your time to get in and out of the market. And honestly, I always say if you're ever going to scalp, then you want to use software. You always do want to use software when you're scalping so you can just get in and out with one click and not really have to fiddle around with the Betfair interface. Obviously, this is just for a demonstration. I just want to keep it simple for you guys. So that's why I'm using the, the, the Betfair interface. But I mean, obviously, like we know, a goal for Huddersfield is really not good for us. So if Huddersfield were to get a corner or a free kick, then I know I could get out of the market. All right, in the end, our bet just got taken, our order, I think that took around three minutes. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's not great, it's not great, it's not very fast, but um, obviously if you're getting in at opportune moments in the match, then, yeah, you, you, might, you might have a good three minutes to, or, or, or less in some occasions to, to get that scalp. So anyway, we, we've got £2 profit sitting on the nil 2 scoreline. We did that with a £10 stake, and obviously you would just repeat that and repeat that uh, opportune times in the match and it's as simple as that and you would start to build up the green on the scoreline to maybe use that later on in the match or maybe at some point you would cash it out right now we wouldn't cash that out it's only a 27 pence profit but we could repeat that over and over again and build up some uh, some green on the 2-0 if it goes 2-0 later on we maybe we could take home a lot of that profit so there's a lot of ways to scalp the correct score market but that's just a very very quick example of how you would do it 
And as you can see, I've done I've done quite a few scalps uh, since the last clip. I'm just gonna I just got in there at 5.7, uh, backing the two note 5.7. So I'm gonna put in an order uh, to lay it at 5.5. Now, uh, as you can see, it's, it is the 32nd minute, and what can happen um, as compared to the previous clip is that the market starts to speed up a little bit. So the two nil is is currently moving a little bit faster. So. Um, I've, I've gone I've, I've gone in and out and you can kind of see here on the right uh, you can see a lot of the trades I've done it's been backing and then laying with just a one tick uh, sort of difference now you can see there we just had another scalp taken and now I have a green amount of £9.60 uh, sitting on the nil two scoreline which is almost as much as the stake I've been using I've been using a £10 stake so you can kind of see how it can work if you get a match where not much is happening and you spot that the score line is moving in at a good speed then you can just get in and out of the market and before you know it you've you've built up enough green uh, just to, just to at least have covered your stake if if the goal goes in as you know we, we could lose the majority of our stake if it's Huddersfield but now we've got a fair amount of green sitting on the on the two nil so it is it's just an example of what you can do and an example of how people would scalp the correct score market uh, when it's in play so I'm just going to show you a back to lay trade here. Now I've just backed the 3-2 scoreline here in this match. This is Fulham against Brighton. 62 minutes gone. It is 2-2. Now I've just backed the 3-2 scoreline to Fulham. Fulham looking very dangerous, completely on top of the match. And like they are uh, likely to go ahead and make the scoreline 3-2. Now, as we know, with the second half market behavior, how it works, we know that the current scoreline is going to keep steaming. And we know that the other score lines are either going to drift or, or stay static. So we know that we, we've got a fair amount of time in the moment in the market where the 3-2 score line is going to stay pretty static. We backed it at 4.9. It's currently there around 4.8. So you've got that to keep in mind. But we also know from the market behavior in the second half that when a goal goes in, all these score lines are just basically going to move up. So 2-2. Whatever the price is on 2-2 is going to be the price on 3-2. So remember, we just backed at 4.9. Currently, we can lay 2-2 at 2.52. So that means that if it goes to 3-2, we'll be able to lay 3-2 at at least 2.52, which uh, could give us £23.80 of green to play with or, or potentially cash out at, at, at that moment. So that's something you could do. And obviously, with time, as time as the clock ticks on, then that uh, that price of 2.52 could go even lower as well and then we've got um, a, a bigger profit potential to play with so when you consider the returns it is slightly uh, worth your your time of putting the money in the market and then letting it run till the till the final whistle there is a 39 pounds worth of profit potential there it is a 10 pound worth of risk or as mentioned this price is going to stay static for a bit you could put it in the market if it's not work if the match is not working out how you like it you could then exit so we just put it in it's a back to lay trade it's fulham against brighton 2-2 64 minutes gone let's see if we get a goal 73 minutes on the clock and it has just gone 3-2 to fulham so uh, quite an amazing turnaround brighton were two now up in this so as you can see the price on the 3-2 scoreline has just gone into 1.76 so let me just quickly lay that. You can clearly see the cash out amount on the screen as well. But um, I'm just going to immediately move the risk from the trade uh, as soon as I can. Uh, well, let me just move that up. Let's try, and remo let's try and remove all the risk. And then we can assess our options. Remember, you don't always have to immediately cash out. But do at least just try and remove your risk. Because another goal means that's it. Your, your, your stake is gone. But OK, now we've removed the risk, so uh, we can see our, our options here. We could ride it out for the final 15 minutes uh, with no further goals. We're going to win £30 or I mean, this match has been pretty lively. <laughs> You've got to feel that there could be easily be another goal in this one. So you could just take the cash out amount and that's probably what we would do. So uh, th that would that is just a simple back to lay trade. You're generally going to be doing this in the second half because you want to be able to profit from that price movement. Remember we backed 3-2 at 4.9 and we got out of the trade by laying it at 1.82. So not a bad trade at all. And that is pretty much 167% uh, return on our investment there. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it, it can be pretty lucrative, uh, the back to lay trades if you're in, in the right position and 
you spot a, a good opportunity and this is uh, one way of trading the correct score market. So those are just a few basic examples of how you would trade the correct score market and in future videos I will go into a lot more detail about all those particular strategies but I just want to give you a few correct score market warnings because this market I mean I did warn you already that it is not an easy market to trade and it's definitely not as easy as a lot of people would have you believe and there is some stuff that you need to be aware of before you trade this market and number one is the sudden death nature of this market there could be situations that arise when you're trading this market which would mean you are going to lose your whole stake so my advice is that when you enter a correct score market trade here's tip number one be prepared to lose whichever stake you are trading with you have to be prepared to lose that stake this is not like other markets where you can go with a big stake and you know it's pretty safe because if it doesn't go your way you can trade out and save some of the stake in the correct score market you might not get that luxury because so, so, I mean because this could happen I mean it could be some quick goals fly in and all of a sudden your whole stake is gone or not necessarily your whole stake is gone but the, the whole trade could be moving against you and then there's a lot of decisions which might have to be made very very quickly and just when you think you've started to rescue the situation another goal goes in so this is what you do have to be aware of and this is why I did say that the correct score market really isn't for, for beginners. If you're a beginner, you're probably better off starting with match odds or the goal markets <laughs> and then only progressing onto the correct score market uh, when you've got a fair bit of, of football trading experience because it is pretty complex. Although I do think this video uh, should have been a pretty big help with understanding it all. But there are some typical newbie mistakes that I want you to be aware of so that you do not make these mistakes yourself. And so mistake number one is expecting too much from the market. I, I see this happen a lot and I see and I get emails about this because a lot of people think that the correct score market is like a gold mine or something. Just because the prices are big on it, a lot of people uh, seem to expect big profits. They think that they can trade with like two pound stakes, hit a hundred to one winner and then make a 200 pound profit or something like that i mean that might be possible if you're just going to back one score line as a bet and then you get that that big lucky win i mean there are some pretty good value prices in the correct score market compared to the bookmakers but you have to expect that when you're trading these markets i mean when you're trading a lot of the time the, the vast majority of the time when you're trading that you are going to be taking a return which is uh, less than the stake you're using. It's a percentage return on the stake, like a 50% return, 75% return. Uh, it is it's definitely possible with correct score trading to make 100% returns, 200%, 300%, but do not expect the, the 10 times returns or anything like that, because honestly, I, I, I do get some emails from people asking me about the correct score market, uh, thinking it's some sort of lottery when it's not you, you have to be very very realist, realistic about the correct score market and as with most trading the, the, the you get out what you put in if you use big stakes you'll get big returns if you use small stakes then you will get similar returns to the stakes that you're using so do keep that in mind next one uh, which went above it, not sure why, but it is, under, it is not understanding the market behavior. But hopefully you've watched this video and you watched the video at the start. I know a lot of people watch these videos and they skip straight to the strategy section and they ignore all the beginning. Um, but yeah, if you watch the beginning, you should have a good understanding of the market behavior. And I'm going to tell you in a moment how to download the cheat sheet so you can go over that when you're trading the correct score market yourself. But that is a big problem that I see a lot of newbies. They dive into the correct score market, have no idea of where the prices are going to go in certain situations. They just back a, back a few score lines and hope for the best. <laughs> when really you do have to understand the market behavior. What's the next one we got? Oh yeah, this is a good one. All right, over complicating the strategies. This is a big, big newbie mistake. I mean, honestly, this one, this one drives me mad. I mean, I mean, just recently I had someone showing me a correct score method that 
it, it, it was so complex. I, I mean, I just couldn't get my head around it. It involved backing a few score lines at, at kickoff. And then when a goal goes in, you're going to back a few more score lines. Then you're going to do something on the match odds market to back as well, or maybe a lay at some point. And then if there is a second goal, which comes in the first half, you have to then cover some other score lines as well. And honestly, I mean, I am experienced with football trading, but even I was confused. And I had to tell the, the person who told me the strategy, I had to say, do you know what? It sounds like you are chasing and chasing and chasing <laughs> till you eventually uh, hit the right score line or, or, or make some sort of profit. And I tell you, that sort of trading is only going to end one way. You might get away with it once, twice, here and there, but eventually the market is going to take your money. It's almost the same as doing some sort of uh, martingale on the roulette machine. Uh, yeah, you're going to make your money here and there, but eventually the casino is going to take your money. And trading that way with some crazy strategy where you're just backing more and more score lines, hoping to, to hit a winner, yeah, the, eventually the market is going to swallow you up and take your money. So keep that in mind. And uh, another, another thing when we talk about overcomplicating the strategies, I remember as well, someone showed me a strategy for the correct score market, which said, uh, yeah, they want to back nil, nil, one, nil and nil one. And then they're going to trade out after uh, 10 minutes. And I said, well, do you know what you're doing there? You're ac actually just backing under 1.5 goals. And then we looked at it and I said, see, you, you're dutching nil, nil, one, nil, and nil, one. You're actually getting the same uh, risk and the same profit if you just backed under one and a half goals. And backing under one and a half goals is a lot more simple than dutching three score lines and then trying to trade that out. So anyway, like I said, uh, there is a lot of people out there who overcomplicate the strategies in the correct score market. And yeah, honestly, sometimes... With, with football trading, the, the, the more simple you keep it, the better. And here is another newbie mistake. It is not having a plan. And that kind of ties in to maybe the overcomplicated strategies or maybe not understanding the market behavior. But yeah, I do see a lot of newbies. They jump in the correct score market. They think it's the way to riches. They back a few of the high score lines, like the 3-3, three, three, the 3-2, three, the 2-3. The and then they just hope for the best because they're expecting goals then when no goals arrive, suddenly it starts to get a little bit desperate. And then you find that they, they lay the nil-nil to try and claw some of that money back. And like I just said, I mean, it, you might get away with it once. You might get away with it twice. You might even get away with it 10 times. But the time you don't get away with it, all your money is, is gone. The market has swallowed it up. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you've watched this video all the way through, you're not going to be making any of those mistakes going forward. And of course, if you've made it this far, then you definitely deserve to download this free uh, cheat sheet that I, that I put up, which would uh, give you a good overview of everything we've kind of learned and picked up in this video. And when you want to trade the correct score market, you want to head over to Betfair, you could uh, bring this up on your computer. You could just print it out for your easy reference and go from there. So as you probably guessed, the link to download this is in the description of this video. I'm also going to try and leave it in the comments section, but it, it, either way, it should be somewhere below this video. So you just got to scroll down and click around and you'll find it, but it will definitely be in the description. Uh, just download that and, and grab it. It is, uh, it is pretty good. It is pretty good. But anyway, uh, that is about it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like any football trading, sports trading videos, if you like that subject, you definitely, definitely want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get the new videos as soon as they come out. And if you want to watch another video, there are two very, very good videos on the screen right now for you to check out. Do check those out and I'll see you in the next video.